Now, this is everything that you need in this little block to graph this. So I'm going to erase this because we don't need any more. Get it. Ready. Well, almost everything. I'm going to leave the asymptotes because I need those. That's going to be important. You're going to kind of see what I want from you on this. The first thing that you should do, put out your asymptotes, wherever those things are. So my asymptotes are at <laughs> x equals 0. x equals 0 horizontally, both right and left, and I'm sorry, uh, y equals 0, both right and left, and x equals 0 for our vertical. So we know we have some asymptotes. Next thing you do, put down your points. Your x-intercept is at 1, 0, and negative 1, 0. Your y-intercept, ah, you don't have one, because you have an asymptote there. You don't have that. Your relative max and relative min. <coughs> Square root of 3 The square root of 3 is about 1.7 somewhere around there. So the relative max occurs at Okay, so there's a slight error in class. Um, the numbers that some of the students gave were a little bit off. Uh, here's the correct numbers. Now, we went through this a couple times, so of course, if you, if you watch the video, you're like, whoa, what's, what's going on here? Why are these numbers changing? Here's where the number's changing. Um, when you take the root 3 and you plug it into the original equation, which gives you points, what you actually end up getting is point three eight. If you take negative square root of 3, plug it into that original equation, you're going to get negative point three eight. Now, when you take the square root of 6, you plug it into the original function, what you're going to get is 0.34 and negative 0.34. They're very close points. Now, the graph's going to look somewhat similar, but you'll notice that on the video, I have that as 1 and negative 1. If you just change that to 0.5 and negative 0.5 and just extend the graph even further, this is about what it looks like. Uh, the, the, the picture of the graph on the, on the video is just fine. Um, so here's what you, you would end up doing. You would still have your same x-intercepts. You would have your relative max and your relative min. You would have your inflection points. They're just really close together. So our graph, as you can see, we're still decreasing, that's what this means right here, decreasing concave down. So we're, we're dropping and we're concave down. That's, that's this way. Also, we have this horizontal asymptote. That's, that's what that was so important for, was to tell us that our function is not going to be going way up like this, not going to go way down like this. It's going to be riding along this x-axis. So it must look about like that. Not exactly like that, but pretty close to that. Then from this point to this point, that's this little interval. It says you're still decreasing, but you're concave up. You're starting, your slope is starting to increase. Your function is still decreasing, but your slope is getting more and more, uh, it's getting larger and larger. So we're going to decrease concave up. And then right after that point, right here, it says you're still concave up, but now you're starting to increase. And what that does is it inc increases all the way up until you get to zero. Now, at x equals zero, you have a vertical asymptote, which means that you're never going to reach this y-axis. All that's going to happen is if you're still increasing as you get closer and closer, you're going to shoot up to positive infinity. So that's what the horizontal asymptote said. It says you are increasing. You can't be decreasing. You're, you're increasing all the way up until x equals zero. That says horizontal asymptote. and you're concave up the whole way. Now the other picture, is it's going to look very similar to this, only kind of rotated a little bit. Uh, starting from zero, you're increasing and you're concave down. That's this way, increasing concave down. Now because, again, you have this vertical asymptote, the only way you can be increasing and concave down uh, and have this 
vertical asymptote is by shooting up just like this. You can't come down, that would be decreasing. So you're coming up like that. Coming up just like that. Now we reach this point, that is our relative maximum. It says at your relative max, you switch from increasing to decreasing, but you're still concave down for that whole interval. So increasing to decreasing, but concave down. That's that little point right there. After that point, it says you're decreasing for the rest of your graph. You're decreasing the whole way, but now you're concave up. The only way we can decrease the rest of the way and be concave up and associate this horizontal asymptote is by putting it right along the x-axis, just riding that thing all the way out. And that's the same picture that you have on your graph. That's an inflection point. Now, how in the world does this graph look? That's why we have the table. This is pretty interesting because we're going to associate all this stuff with our asymptotes. Now check it out. You know that this has to go close to this one, this has to go close to this one, has to go here somewhere and there somewhere, right? Now here's what it says. It says you're going to be decreasing, decreasing is like this, and you're going to be concave down. That's this way. Does that make sense? All the way until you get to this point, that negative root 6. That looks like this. Decreasing, concave down. Do you follow me? That's the only way you can have it. If you're decreasing concave down up here, you fail the asymptote. You have to be with the asymptote. That's why asymptotes are important. It says you're going to be at that asymptote right there. You see what I'm talking about? Okay. From here to here, this little, little interval says you're decreasing, but you're concave up. So this part, decreasing down. This little part, decreasing up. That's the inflection point coming back at us. That's this. That's concave up. You see the, the decreasing concave up? Then this part says increasing concave up. That's this way. And you actually do that all the way to zero. Now, how do we go all the way to zero? Where do you think this is going? If it's increasing and there's an asymptote, does it magically go back down here? Otherwise, we have another relative max, wouldn't we? It's going to go all the way to infinity. There's an asymptote, folks, an asymptote. It has to go to the asymptote. So if it says increasing, concave up to zero, it's going like this. Forever. Is there any other way that it could be and still have the asymptote? Nope. Now, the rest of it, the other side of the graph. The other side of the graph says, for this interval up to root three, you're increasing. You're concave down. That's this way. You follow? <coughs> Increasing concave, but you also have an asymptote. So you have to meet the asymptote. Increasing concave down. That's increasing concave down. Until you reach a relative max. You know that's a relative max. Then it says for this little interval, you're decreasing, you're decreasing and you're concave down. Decreasing and concave down. That's this way. So for here you're gonna go, oh, down. And then from here on out, after that root 6, remember that's our root 6, you're going to be decreasing, but you're concave up. That's this way. And you have to meet that asymptote. That's there. As good as we can do. But that's a pretty darn good graph for just having some, for no graphing calculator. That's pretty good. How many people are able to follow that? Now, you've got to be careful. Be careful with these numbers. You messed me up. But that's okay. Be careful with your numbers on your own. Now, we only got through one example. If you want to hang out just a little bit, I'm going to try to do one more. All right, we're going to do one more example. How to graph some rational functions. I'm going to try to go all the way through it, but I'm going to be erasing things as we go. So it might help you to write this down as we're going through it. That way, when I erase it, you're not like totally lost. So I'm going to save some space. I only have a limited board to work with. So. Let's start with our x and y intercepts. That's always step number one. X-intercept says, where is the numerator equal to zero? That's the only place where this function can actually equal zero. If the denominator equals zero, then we're undefined. We have either holes or asymptotes. So in our case, x-intercepts are add eight, divide by two, take a square root, plus and minus two.
go for lower. Okay, y intercepts. You plug in x equals 0, what you have is 0 minus 8, 0 minus 16, negative 8 over negative 16 is positive 1 half. Vertical asymptotes, those occur where your denominator equals 0 and you can't cross it out, you can't simplify. If you were able to simplify, it would be a whole. But if you're not able to simplify, that's a vertical asymptote. So when we have this denominator equal to 0, again, well, it's different squares. You can factor it. You can add 16, take a square root. Either way, you're going to get x equals 4 and negative 4. Now, x plus 4 and x minus 4, they do not simplify with our numerator. That means they're not wholes. They are, in fact, asymptotes. All right. Now, as far as our horizontal asymptotes go, that says what happens when we take x to infinity and negative infinity. And that's that's dealt with a limit. If you notice that we have our leading terms, polynomial here, polynomial here, the powers are the same. So when you do that whole divide by the largest power in the denominator thing, you're going to divide by x squared. What that's going to give you is 2, 0, 1, 0. So basically you have 2 over 1. That's going to be 2. Also notice that it doesn't matter if I have negative infinity either. You get the same exact thing. What that means is we have a horizontal asymptote at 2 to the right and 2 to the left. So I'm going to erase this now. We know our horizontal asymptotes are at 2 either way. y equals 2. Now, as far as our, our first derivative test and second derivative test, here goes our derivatives. Try to follow along. Again, I'm going to erase this when I'm done. That's our first derivative. Now, what the first derivative says is slope. Where slope is positive, you're increasing. Where slope is negative, you're decreasing. Where slope is zero, you have the potential for a relative max to 